Get it off your chest. Call Neil Prenderville now on 0818-104-106. Red FM. I'll come back to the calls, texts, and comments on different topics across the morning. I promise you that. But I was intrigued by a story that I read in the Echo recently. It's a super article by Sarah Horgan. And she talks about a Cork brother and a Cork sister who were adopted separately uh, when, when they were very young. Um, and then had a chance encounter many years later. Uh, unbeknownst to each other until they got chatting they found out that they were brother and sister it's a fabulous story it's the story of Jerry O'Malan and Val Russell and they both joined me by phone so good morning to both of you Jerry and Val thanks for taking the call morning you. great chatting with you so what's the backstory? the backstory to this is that both of you were adopted as very young children is it out of the Sacred Heart Convent jump in either one of you just to pick up on the story uh, we were actually both uh, adopted from Besborough, Neil. Uh, my brother Jerry was born in 73, and I was born in 74. Right. Um, so that's what the story was. And the funny thing is, my seven, uh, Jerry have both the same biological parents, and all was growing up as a child. When I was very small, I was adopted by my father, Paul Russell, and I had four brothers and a sister. And I kept asking my dad when I was small, where's my brother, where's my brother? And my dad said, your four brothers are there. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, I was always told I was adopted. There was no big secret in the house. But were you told that you had a biological brother? No, no. You just so knew? I no, I did. You know, the only way I can explain it, Neil, I, it's like there's a party I'm missing. And when I was a kid, I used to say to my dad, why didn't you adopt my twin? Because I, I had this feeling I had a twin. And my dad said, I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. If there was only one of you girls, he said, and that was enough for me. He said, yeah, yeah. If there was a second one, he said, I'd have taken both of you, know? So you... I kind of, I suppose, put it out of my head then for years and years and years, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I suppose, like a lot of adopted children, we, we have fantasies. You know, you have fantasies of what your parents are like, where they came from. And I was talking to Jerry this morning, and I had um, two very uh, strange fantasies. One was, uh, I knew I was foreign. But my dad thought at the time, I think I was half uh, Indian, but I was actually ended up being half Egyptian. Right, right. And as, as a kid, I fantasized that, you know, my father was this big king and he probably had this affair with a woman he shouldn't have had. Because it was yonder worlds that you'd never heard about. Yeah, and it's the imagination of a child as well running riot. It's normal. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And then I went from one extreme to the other. We were learning uh, through school and uh, the Catholic religion that you shouldn't have a child outside marriage. And I thought, geez, I couldn't have been a Martin's son. Maybe they died. So then I made up my next story was they both got killed in a car crash. Right. And I believed that till I was a teenager. And what was and going on? And just let me ask Jerry, <laughs> Jerry, what was going on in your head at the same time that, that was going on in Val's? <laughs> uh, well, they, as I said, they, uh, it was the polar opposite in a way, Neil. The, the weird thing was I froze down completely and... Um, it was like ticking a box, um, as I kind of said. I was going to, oh yeah, I was adopted. Uh, you know, how how interesting. Like, but, yeah. but kind of nothing beyond that. Just, it was like, yeah, my adopted parents, my parents, and there's some other thing. But it was so alien and foreign, as it literally didn't register emotionally at all at that stage. <laughs> yeah, for for it's someone who someone who went in as a career to directing and writing and scripting movies. Um, you didn't have as fertile Im- as imagination as your sister then, as a young fella. <laughs> well, do you know the weird thing? I did, but just not. No, I was off the wall, Neil. Completely, I'm still off the wall. But um, I just, in that regard, I, I think I just sprayed some kind of antifreeze on the old soul or something because, as I say, in my plays, in my thing, it was the opposite way around. Um, just with regard to the adoption thing, I was totally shut down to it, which is weird, you know. So we had, we had an opposite uh, experience in that regard. But did it did it a time arrive, Val, when you started making inquiries though about whether you were yeah. a brother or not? And I, I think I, you ultimately course. then got to write, was it? So what what happened was when I when I was I am eighteen years of age I became pregnant. And I suppose when I started going to the hospital visit they were saying, What's your family medical history? What's your family? I know. And and I was kind of going, She's having the clue. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and I did like it got me thinking. So what I started doing then is I started researching and there was an adoption society that closed on the UCM and Paul Street. Yeah. St. Anne's Adoption Society. And I started there and they facilitated letters to an agency in Clare where my mother is from. Right. Where our mother is from. Yeah. And um, it took some time. And then after that, we corresponded through the agency. So this was myself and my mother yes. first, you know. Yeah, yeah. And How did that go for you? 
you know, the, the letters were a bit strange. The first meet, I suppose, I was saying to people, like, we have a fantastic relationship now, but it was trying at the time because, God love my poor mother, when we met first, she was looking for the child. You know, last time she left me, I was a baby. A grown you know woman what I mean? comes along, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then the grown woman comes along. And because uh, Jerry was born before, I remember having the chat with her after, like, she said it brought back all the pain of Jerry and then me as well. Of course, you know but she had, at some stage when you met her, she, she acknowledged to you and confirmed that you did have a brother. Oh, yeah, that was, you. Re- I mean, I couldn't get over because I thought all my life that I had this just this mad, another one of my wonderful Imagination, fantasies, you yeah, know. Yeah, and yeah. I thought this is another one of your fantasies, you know. And actually she took some time to tell me because she was very nervous. She was afraid I would judge her. Um, and like my mother has had an absolutely horrific life and grew up in the orphanage in the age of 10 months, oh, for you know. God's sake. So I she know. had a very, very hard I life, know. you know, and I she's know. an amazing, kind, caring woman today. And, like, and we at, have what, a great relationship at what with stage her. then did you manage to find where Jerry was and begin to write to him? So what happened was um, my, when I found my mother, my mother was saying, we need to find your brother. You know, and I get, at that stage, I didn't even know I had a brother. And then all my Christmases came together. I thought, I'm not mad. This is great. And we started writing to the convent, um, uh, writing letters and writing letters. And my mother was ringing them and whatnot. This was down in Besmer. That's the place we were writing to. I yeah. think Sister Mary Sarto and some other nun was there at the time. Yeah. And at the time, um, and Jerry will explain himself, he wasn't in a headspace really to meet us. So did you get a letter from your sister then, Jerry? Was it from Val? Yeah, well, what happened was uh, one of the, the nuns, uh, actually, at the Sacred Heart, was a friend of my mother. So um, I got, I was uh, kind of um, uh, given the, the information and given the letters from from each person. I had one from my father, one from my mother, and um, and uh, one from Val. And uh, as Val was saying, yeah, I was in a, a not in a good place at all at the time in my own life. And therefore, at that reason, the kind of combination of where I was at myself, which wasn't good. Yeah. And... I had just thought, but you're not in a good place yourself. I thought, well, nothing good, you know, you're projecting your own. I thought, I don't feel good, so nothing good is going to come at it. I or gotcha. if it is, you know, I'm not in the place to kind of have this right now. So then I wrote back kind of saying, you know, thanks a million, but we might in the future. And I think they might have wrote every, maybe about two years, the Sacred Heart would have checked into me and I'd be like, no, no, I'm grand, you know, and but I'm, mm-hmm. I may in the future. Like, and then, um, as I say, then it, it was sick, it was, uh, around 2004 of course that we, we went smack bang into each other and so fate crazy. intervened then What? how did that come about? Yeah. So, uh, so we met We were, well what happened was we were both in the same uh, late night nightclub instinct in Cork uh, out having a few pints with friends I think Jerry was on his own and I was with someone else having a drink and I was sitting down having a chat and I just could feel someone staring at me is the only way I can describe it. And I was looking over, and at the time, Jerry was a very eccentric dresser. He had a full long leather jacket, big biker boots. I mean, he stood out. Sounds great, <laughs> actually. That, Sounds know? great to me. <laughs> yeah, and I'm looking and saying, what's your man staring at, you know? Pick it up there. Will you think- pick it up there, Jerry? So you're looking across. <laughs> yeah, as and I eventually said, decide weird- to approach. No, the weird thing is, I just froze. I got I, the second I saw it, I just froze. I can't explain it. Um, I kind of went into a trance. This whole thing is very bizarre, Neil. Like you know, um, and it was about fifteen minutes. I was looking at her, and um, as I said, then she's kind of saying to her friend, like, "Just this creep freaking me out." You know, I her afterwards, which is me, like. <laughs> and um, the weird thing is, I was just completely. I, I, I am a fluent Spanish speaker, and I'm a bilingual tour guide for excursions to Ireland, like doing the cruise ships and stuff down the coast. Cool. And I just started to learn Spanish. I went, she's Spanish, I say, like she's very dark, you know. And I'm going to go over and I'm going to talk to her, but it's not my style to go up to people. So I was actually terrified. And um, you know, she's <laughs> then the last the last words I said to myself as I kind of went over on rubbery legs was like, "He who dares wins." <laughs> and um, as I say, then uh, went up to her, just said, um, uh, "Sorry, um, are you?" Um, it was Spanish, and then as I was joking, she goes, "No, nah, boy, uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, you look foreign." And I said, "Yeah, I'm half Egyptian." Val says, "I'm half Egyptian," <laughs> straight away because she's very sharp. I'm 49 now. She says, "How old are you?" I said, "31." She said, "Do you mind if I ask you a personal question?" I said, uh, "No." She said, "Were you adopted?" I said, "I was." She says, your, "Is your mother from County Clare?" I said, "Yeah." <laughs> she says, your, this, "Was your mother's name Noreen?" I said, "Yeah." Is your father and I are, are living in Cairo. I said, "Yeah." She goes, "What's your birth name?" I said, "Shireen." She goes, Shireen Henry. I said, yeah. She goes, are you Jerry? And I goes, and he goes, oh my God, I'm only like your sister. And as I said, the, the weirdest thing went through my head. I actually thought, 
like candy camera, it's punked, it's a joke. <laughs> and, but then I looked at her face and I was like, joke, it's like me at 17 in drag, same eyes, same teeth, same I was going, oh my God, I should we went bananas. And, like, <laughs> and we, we jumping tore up and down in the bar. I remember that, the two of us were just yeah. jumping up and down the bar. <laughs> Everybody was looking at us like we were raving lunatics. <laughs> And like I remember saying to Jerry, come on, and I got him a taxi, brought him up to my house, and we stayed up the whole night trying to catch up in 30 years of life that we didn't have together, you know? I mean, in the most <laughs> light-hearted manner in which I can say this, Val, you know your brother yeah. was chatting you up. <laughs> well, we, we no, had a I weird... Can, <laughs> I can say to this day that uh, there was no hillbilly shipping going on. At the no, I know, I know all of that, but I talk about the... <laughs> no, but it wasn't even a hint. I, I can't, it was weird because if you might pick up that weird thing while you were saying as well, you know, about even jumping yeah. when I walked... Well, actually, what them. happened, there's it, it another thing just before Jerry actually came to the bar. To me, when he walked past my chair earlier on to go to the toilet, I actually, my body inadvertently jumped from the seat. So much so, my body said, what's your man after doing this? Nothing. Oh, but I said, there's something really going, you know, freaking me out here. You're very I much tuned in, on. aren't you, Val? You really are. Like, oh, very, you know. Listen, there's two things. You were, in the right, you were in the right nightclub for this. Instinct. Very much yeah. so. It's I like know. As if, we it's like as if it was intended. Sure, yes, I was going, this is why like, we couldn't have picked a better place to meet up, like, instinct, you know. Yeah, yeah, But I yeah. think for us, we were saying, number one, there's so much heartbreak and, uh, you know, terrible sad stories and genuine stories with adoption cases you know <laughs> and sometimes it's nice to shed a light on some of the nice ones and you know we've had our trials and tribulations and you know more of them, you know, with our mother and all that like and we're now we have a great family Claire and uh, we want to find the missing puzzle now I did find our father many many years ago and I was in contact with him for about a year and we lost contact, and we would love to find him again. Was he? You know, was he back him. in? Was he back in Cairo, Val? Was he? So he went. His last. I heard the last words I had with him. He was going through a divorce at the time, and he was uh, living in Cairo then. And he moved. He said he was moving back to Egypt. Um, and I didn't, I suppose, realise at the time that that was going to be the last time I was going to have a phone call or a chat with him. You know. Yeah, I know. Would you like to meet um, him? Would you like to meet him, oh, Jerry? Oh. I would be. I would, of course, um, absolutely. As I said, um, just to get his name out there, if I say it the right way, Nassim Ahmed Hamed Amuda. Probably haven't even got it in the right order. But I've never even seen a photo of him, Neil. So, um, and we have an Egyptian brother and sister as well. So, I mean, how does what age was all together? It's mad. Like, <laughs> I, of course, I would. Not. Who's got the Egyptian barber that you've been asking for help? Which one is that? Yeah, the, the lads are going to kill me because I came. I came right up on Google as well because I get. I get the, the hot towel shave and the hair. <laughs> and I can't even remember the name. Like, got, they're across from the GPO and they're brilliant. And I'm in there all the time. And I go and I murder me. They're probably all crying. They're now inside crying in Arabic. <laughs> but um, they were because they're very good. Like, and you should get the Egyptian barbers on the case, shouldn't you? But that's that, that's what I'm saying. One of the lads was over for a wedding, and and he was over for three months, and I think he he didn't get anywhere with it. You know, it's it's my grandmother's um, old address. Like it's a real, you know, you're like talking a needle in in a needle, a haystack in Cairo. Like. Oh God, it would be a wonderful thing, yeah. though, wouldn't it? What about your what about your birth, ma'am? Have you managed to to hook up? Yeah. Well, yeah, we had that. Yeah, sorry, what, Jerry. Go on. What was that like, Jerry? Oh no, you're grand. Yeah, as I said, um, after I met a few months after I met Val. I uh, I met uh, my birth mother Noreen. Went up to County Clare. Met all my half brothers. And like we've all, as I say, we've all. And you know, I also when I grew up, my adopted family. I didn't know where the I'm an actor and a singer and, and all. I didn't know where any of that came from. But so when I met the family, then they all had fabulous singing voices. Like the the lads have one kind of bow on stuff, and the mother's an amazing singer. So it explained where and uh, and Noreen is some storyteller as well. I can tell you that much. So and, well, like uh, it's like pieces where, of the jigsaw started to fall into place. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Do you know? I, I mean, as um, Val was saying, and uh, I, you know, that kind of Forrest Gump analogy of uh, life is like a box, a box of chocolates. Adoption is um, a necessary thing, but you know, it's a very mixed bag of what you get. Overall, like we we've had an amazing um, experience. There were definitely some bits of it, that, you know, that are difficult and stuff. But um, overall, it's and and this is the thing we want to highlight as well. There's an, there's plenty of sad stories. And plenty of tragedy no, around the whole thing that's played. Story. But let's highlight it's great to highlight that the good stuff that came out of it as well, you know, just to give people a bit of an uplift, you know? Absolutely. You're like the fella that got pushed in at the deep end, like, and had no control over it, right? <laughs> it's either well, sink or swim. I mean, look at, 
But look at how it ended now. I mean, cause as I said, the amazing thing now is Val was actually producing my first feature film, like, because um, I, I had a, a, I did a comedy feature film there at the start of the year and we even launched it in, um, we launched it in Clancy's first and then Val uh, charmed the ears off the guy in the All Cinema and we screened it. But I mean, I did my own, um, I got a, um, Mess take on a James Bond movie. Bond, Bond delusion, movie. yeah. Yeah, which is on YouTube, by the way, if anyone wants to watch. Well, there you're very proud <laughs> of your brother, aren't you? Fairness. I'm incredibly. I mean, there's no one more proud of me. Oh, Jerry, I, I know the story and the journey he has done, and he was two years editing it, and every day me driving him not going. Is it done yet? Is it done well, yet? let's get everybody to check out the film Bond Delusion on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. For sure, we will. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be yeah. another great chapter if you found your birth dad? Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing? I think, I think we is, can. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. There's no be met sure. That's the weird thing, Val. As I said, he could turn yeah. up in the, from his end, Neil, to be super easy because we haven't gone anywhere. We're just in Cork. He's and I know he really wants to meet Jerry because, yes. and I said this to Jerry, see, my father never knew I existed. That's another part of the story. Really? So, really? Yeah. So what happened, my poor, God love my poor mother, when she, she lived in the UK and she met my father, Ahmed, he was then studying in... He got a visa to, to do uh, economics in college over there. My mother was working, I think, in, in one of the hospitals. In London, was and it? And they dated for a while. Pardon? In London, was it? Yeah, in London. Yeah. So they dated over there uh, back in the day, as they say. And uh, my mother fell pregnant and came back to Ireland. His visa ran out. He had to go back to Egypt in between the, the, the years, you know. Yeah. So when she got home, God love her, the first thing that any uh, everybody did back then was that we were sent to Besborough. Yeah. So yeah. she was sent to Besborough. Um, she was writing to Ahmed. Ahmed couldn't get a visa into Ireland. Uh, my mother was sent to Besborough and she said, you know, she said, you know, the nuns kind of more or less brainwashed her and said, you know, you're never going to get anyone to mind the child, especially it's half cast. And that was kind of brought up. And that you're very lucky now we have someone here for the child. And all this kind of was, was uh, planted in my mother's head. And she said, you know, um, then Jerry's vet, Jerry was... Um, Adopted, and what happened was, my mother got a, par- a job then in bonds in the hospital there in Cork. Yeah. And what happened was, Lockmit uh, got in to Ireland. Now I think Jerry might have been two months older. They were very much in love then, weren't they? Oh, they were. And what happened was, my mother broke out of the convent. There was murdered. She went out to sneak out to find them, and uh, they booked a night in the Imperial, and hence why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I was conceived in the Imperial Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> through the the and through Jerry, there's a film in this, pal. There's a film. In, there's a script there waiting to be written. <laughs> there's several films. <laughs> it's, we talked it's about mad, like, they say through, uh, they were through the stranger in fiction, and, and did your minutes, did your you know? did your birth dad then just did he have to leave again then or what? So what happened was my mother went back to he was all, he was upset that Jerry was gone yet he couldn't really stand by my mother because I think he had an arranged marriage at some stage anyway. Oh right! Oh my God! So there was well, a whole other side to that. And then what happened? She followed him back to the UK and they so she didn't when she found out she was pregnant, she said nothing to him and came back to Ireland because she said she couldn't have faced all of that again. And God love her. What happened this time that was a bit different. She was sent back down to Besborough, but she fought tooth and nail and took me out of Besborough. And I was rare. She brought me home to Killaloo and I stayed in Killaloo for a few months. And then my mother couldn't, I suppose, emotionally or financially look after me. You know, it was an ideal that she wanted to do because she'd lost one child and didn't want to lose another. Oh, and then I was taken into the care system for, I think, three months. And I was adopted on Valentine's Day. Oh and so I was called Valerie when I was six months. Amazing, isn't it? I just yeah, so much so, of it. You know, you know it's hard journey for her. It's bittersweet like, I mean, now looking back at it, yeah. isn't it? Oh, it is, and I can only imagine like the, the the amount of emotion we opened up when we rocked in the door. How was it going? Like, I know, you know, I know, I know. <laughs> but at the same time, it was all centered on love, their oh, love for absolutely. each other, you know, and the and the system uh, that prevented it, if you like, you know, it's very it's tragic in that regard. It really is. Oh, I, but would and would the would the Egyptian able. would the Egyptian embassy not be able to help or a trip to Egypt or you know going through census and things like that? Nothing like that. I suppose we haven't, Jerry. We were laughing. We're, we're lazy lookers. We say we tried it. We haven't really. <laughs> We've kind of talked we about it. We tried everything. 
<laughs> we tried it and we tried nothing. We, Isn't that it, Jerry? <laughs> we've joked that there's a, there's a, I think there's a blind spot with both of us with that. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, my hairdresser's probably not like the equivalent of Interpol, you know? Equivalent <laughs> 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 Interpol is the Egyptian hairdresser on Oliver Plunkett Street. You have to be the whole, move, the whole subplot about the hairdresser. <laughs> I think you need to step up a gear, guys. <laughs> Find your birth, Dad. But there's definitely a documentary there. It's just screaming to be made. Well, we've ta- we definitely talked about that because, um, you know, yeah. so we may we may look at at uh, doing that in the new year. We could do a whole series of, uh, of interviews with family and stuff. Oh, will you please we'll stay in touch? Because everybody would be really, uh, you know, we would would be really lo- interested in an update if and when there is. Well, an we will, of course. Just to say as well, um, I mean, look, I'm on. Uh, I, it's Jerry O'Malan Productions is, is the company. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I also have a website. Jerry Omeland Productions and um, you can you know link in with us uh, through that and um, you know there was the Echo Lives uh, article went out on Facebook so we're, we're interactable and contactable in that rhyme so fantastic <laughs> well, <laughs> done. well said great story can't wait for the next chapter or the next thank update you. thanks so much <laughs> thank lads you. appreciate, appreciate it thank you Val it. thank you Jerry thank great you. story isn't Take it care. it actually is a great story on so many different levels it also tell you, it shows us the reunification of a, a brother and sister and how that came about in a Cork nightclub and what have you but it also shows of the societal changes that we've had thankfully from back in the day when of course women who found themselves pregnant really had their own lives taken from them uh, and were told where to go and what to do and how to behave and how to live and that in itself was a tragedy for many of them. Text 0868104106 uh, back after the break. Talk to Neil Prenderville now. 0818104106 Cork's Red FM. I want to talk to Angela but just very quickly 100% agree with this text. Wow, what an amazing story of Jerry and Val. What a beautiful story. What a sad story. So many emotions to it. Yes, you're right. Hope they find their dad and that their beautiful mum is doing well. God bless them. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. 